Welcome to Dunblane Cathedral Handbell Ringers Autumn Concert to celebrate the Scottish year of coasts and waters. We would normally have held our annual summer concert in Dunblane Cathedral, but we did not want to miss out on the opportunity to hold our planned concert, even if we could only do it virtually. For those of you who would normally support us in the cathedral, we hope that you will enjoy this alternative approach. And welcome to those of you that are new to us. All the pieces played by the three groups, children's group, Leighton team and concert team, have a connection with Scottish coasts and waters. We hope that our selection will bring back pleasant memories for those who are familiar with the locations or inspire those for whom the sights and sounds are new. Enjoy.
Since the beginning of when the pandemic hit Scotland, our handbell groups at Dunblane Cathedral have been meeting entirely virtually every week. For the first few months, we had no access to our handbells. So we worked on playing our individual parts in the music with whatever instruments were available in our own homes. And we created no bell virtual recordings. Though three men dwell on Flan and Isle to keep the lamp alight, as we steered under the lee, we caught no glimmer through the night. A passing ship at dawn had brought the news and quickly we set sail to find out what strange thing might ail the keepers of the deep sea light. The winter day broke blue and bright with glancing sun and glancing spray as o'er the swell our boat made way as gallant as a gull in flight. As we neared the lonely isle and looked up at the naked height and saw the lighthouse towering white with blinded lantern that all night had never shot a spark of comfort through the dark. So ghostly in the cold sunlight it seemed that we were struck the while with wonder all too dread for words. As into the tiny creek we stole beneath the hanging crag, we saw three clear black ugly birds. Too big by far in my belief for guillemot or shag, like seamen sitting bolt upright upon a half-tide reef. But as we neared, we plunged from sight without a sound or spurt of white. And still too amazed to speak, we landed and made fast the boat. And climbed the track in single file, each wishing he was safe afloat on any sea, however far, so it be far from Flannan Isle. seemed to climb and climb as though we'd lost all count of time and so must climb for evermore yet all too soon we reached the door the black sun blistered lighthouse door that gaped for us ajar <laughs> On the threshold for a spell we paused, we seemed to breathe the smell of lime wash and of tar, familiar as our daily breath, as though to wear some strange scent of death. And so, yet wondering, side by side, we stood a moment still.
still tongue-tied, and each with black foreboding eyed the door ere we should fling it wide to leave the sunlight for the gloom. Till, plucking courage up at last, hard on each other's heels we passed into the living room. Yet, as we crowded through the door, we only saw a table spread for dinner, meat and cheese and bread. But all untouched and no one there, as though when they sat down to eat, ere they could even taste, alarm had come, and they in haste had risen and left the bread and meat, for at the table head a chair lay tumbled on the floor. We listened, but we only heard the feeble cheeping of a bird that starved upon its perch, and, listening still, without a word, we set about our hopeless search. We hunted high, we hunted low, and soon ransacked the empty house. Then, o'er the island, to and fro, we ranged to listen and to look in every cranny, cleft or nook that might have hid a bird or mouse. searched from shore to shore, we found no sign in any place, and soon again stood face to face before the gaping door. And stole into the room once more as frightened children steal. Aye, though we hunted high and hunted low and hunted everywhere, of the three men's fate we found no trace of any kind in any place but a door ajar and an untouched meal and an overtoppled chair. And as we listened in the gloom of that forsaken living room, a chill clutch on our breath. We thought how ill chance came to all who kept the flannin light, and how the rock had been the death, and of what might yet befall. <laughs> like curs a glance has brought to heel, we listened, flinching there, and looked and looked on the untouched meal and the overtoppled chair. We seemed to stand for an endless while, though still no word was said. Three men alive on Flannan Isle, who thought on three men dead.